In this tutorial, we'll take a look at PyAutoGUI and its screen-based functions. As an automation library, PyAutoGUI can automatically locate elements on the screen. All you need to do is give it an image of that element that you're trying to find, and it'll automatically return its coordinates to you by scanning the entire screen. For example, you see this calculator over here? So for example, you want PyAutoGUI to click on the button 9, but you don't know where the calculator is on the screen. Right? For example, if I move the calculator down here or up there or around the screen, right? it could be anywhere. So you don't want to hard code your application. right? You don't want to make your program in such a way that if the calculator is moved 100 pixels to the left, suddenly your entire program fails. You, you don't want that. right? So for that, we have the location-based tools, the location-based functions in PyAutoGUI, which using just an image, just an image of that button or whatever you want to find. You just give it to that function, to the locate on screen function in PyAutoGUI, and it'll automatically return the coordinates of that place. Well, what are we going to do in today's video? Well, as you can probably guess, we're going to make PyAutoGUI automatically use this calculator. OK, so PyAutoGUI, we're just going to give it the images for some buttons, which I have over here. OK, this is. Uh, Hold on, it's loading. All right, so here's the five button, here's the seven button, here's the is equal to, and here's plus. Okay, so we have these buttons over here. And yeah, so the point of this video is to use these images that I have here. I took screenshots of these buttons, and we're gonna make PyAutoGY automatically do some calculations. Before we do that, though, let me just show you the screenshot function in PyAutoGY because it's part of the screen-based functions in PyAutoGUI, so I, I thought I'd mention it. You can use this to take a screenshot of the screen. So if I do this, for example, you can take a screenshot of the entire screen, okay? And this returns an image object of the screenshot that you took of the screen. And you can even uh, save this if I pass in a name, like, um, what should I call it? Full screen sh screenshot, if I do this, dot png, it's going to save that. Okay, let me just navigate over to my correct folder, uh, pi, pi auto gy, and I'll run this code. Oh wait, auto pi. Sorry, I don't know why I called it auto pi gy. And if I run this code, it's going to save the screenshot, and there we go. Uh, where is it? Full screen dot png. And there we go. See, this is a complete screenshot. And what you can even do, I'll call it partial screen, partial screen. You can take a partial screenshot. So region is equal to, this is a tuple. So there, this tuple takes four values. The first value is the offset, the left and right offset. So zero, zero, zero and zero will make it start from this corner. Okay, this corner up here, the top left corner. And then the width and the height. I want to take a 300 by 300 pixel screenshot starting from the uh, top left corner. That's what this code does. So if I run this code, it's going to make a new screenshot called partial screenshot. And as you can see, it just has 300 pixels from the top left corner. So you can use this to you know, change stuff and take screenshots and return image objects as well that you can use later on in PyAutoGUI. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Now let's move on to the main topic of today, and that's you know image detection basically with PyAutoGUI. The main focus of today's video is actually going to be a single function called locate on screen, uh, yeah, locate center on screen. It returns an x and y value, okay? So it has return two return values, locate center on screen. And what this does is that it takes an image, okay? I'll pass in 5.png to it, okay? And it's gonna locate it and then print out its values, all right? And let me run this code. And there, we got the value 158, 1588, and 730. Great, and we can tell based off the position of the button five over here, we can tell that it's correct because you know it's almost to the right side of the screen, which is the maximum value. My screen size is 1920 by 1080, so I know that uh, uh, this is roughly correct because it's you know almost to the right side of my screen and near the, near the bottom. 
so these values match okay now this is not so simple because i know that many of you will have a problem around this point okay this is not going to work for a lot of people when they try to doing it themselves and i'll tell you why the reason behind that is that this function looks for an exact match every pixel must match and only then will it return these x and y coordinates okay for example i have a jpg file here and a png file for the button 5 if i try using the jpg file you'll notice that this will not work it's going to give me this error none type object is non-subscriptable okay and that's because i took this screenshot in a different way this jpg file i did it in a format which i believe compressed it so when i initially took these screenshots i was confused myself like why isn't it working but then i realized that a pi auto gy expects an exact match okay so the compressed version is a bit different you know it's compressed so its pixels are slightly you know modified and that causes the problem with pi auto gy it says i don't recognize this so how do we fix this okay we could uh, just focus on taking exact matches you know we could uh, take screenshots in a lossless manner and by the way let me, let me just tell you how i did it I used the snipping tool in Windows, okay? And I went to paint and I saved it in here as a PNG file. So it worked for me when I did that. So that's something that some of you may be interested in knowing. All right. Yeah, back on, back on track though. What I want to do is teach you guys about a way that we can actually use the JPG file even though it's compressed. Because often you won't have the luxury of getting your hands on a lossless version of that image and more importantly we shouldn't be looking for exact matches in the first place because what if there's a slight difference what if it's a, you know a few pixels smaller or a few pixels bigger or that the tone is a bit different the color changed a bit i don't know for some reason this is going to cause problems right so what if there was a way that we could not go for a hundred percent match but rather a 80 or 90 or even 60 percent match well there is a way of doing that Okay, and that's by using OpenCV. To set up OpenCV on your systems, what you guys can do is use this command, pip install OpenCV Python. What this does is sets up uh, a kind of a mini version of OpenCV on your system, okay? And the actual OpenCV is a lot bigger and requires a lot of different things to set up, okay? It's a bit complicated, but this, this version, this mini version is enough for basic tasks such as what we're going to do with PyAuto GUI in here. So yeah, it'll be more than enough for now. If you guys are interested in OpenCV further, you can go check out those videos on OpenCV separately. All right. Anyway, anyways, just run that command and it'll work. You also need to install NumPy, okay, if you don't already have it, and matplotlib. These are two supporting libraries that OpenCV will need at the dependency. I'm not sure you'll need them if you aren't using OpenCV's other functions but just do them just in case, all right? So yeah, I'll have more info on this on my website as well, okay? Uh, there'll be a link to, to it in the description below. So in case there are any problems over here, you can go check that out over there. Everything, all the commands will be written there. You can just copy them from there and run them and everything will be A-OK. -okay. Anyways, so enough chatter. It's time to actually use OpenCV and trust me, it's super, super simple. You might think we need to use some complicated function here, but no, all we need to do is use the confidence parameter in here and assign it a value on the scale of one, sorry, zero to one, yeah, in float values as well. It can be 0 0.1 or 0 0.9 or one. Okay, one means an exact match. 0 0.9 means, uh, you know, 90% match. 0 0.8 is 80% and so on and we need opencv for this parameter to work okay that's all we had to do and because i have opencv installed if i try using the jpg file now this is gonna work okay Control alt n i'll run this code and as you can see it just gave me this okay so yeah this is pretty cool because now we have even non-exact matches working and now we can begin our actual code Okay, we can actually make PyAuto GUI go there and then click on it. Let's do that. And by the way, this is, I think, where I should mention is that these coordinates over here 
are actually the center of the image. So we're finding five right now, right? So this coordinate is actually the very center of this image because I'm using locate center on screen. If I did locate on screen, then it would return this. Let me show you. Print uh, object is equal to that. It returns an object, a box object, and that box object contains four pieces of information. It contains the left, top, width, and height. So this is just something to keep in mind. You can then access those individual coordinates if you want to. You, you can actually find the center using this box object. Just take the width, divide it by two, add it into the left offset. Take the height, divide it by two, add it into the top offset, and you have your center. Okay, but this is you know easier just to use this function. So let's go with that, all right? So now let's move our mouse over to these coordinates and then click on it just to show that we have our automation working correctly. Let's put a duration of one and then we do pi auto gy dot left click. All right, let's go. So the mouse is gonna, no. Okay, we had a bit of a typo here. Let me fix that and let's run this code again and the mouse should move over and good. It clicked on it and there five has appeared. All right, so now let's um, modify this code. Let's add in some extra parts. We'll move over to uh, plus, okay, plus.gpg and then do the same thing. And this is actually where we could, you know, make an entire while loop and make an entire proper program, but this is just for testing purposes. So let's not make that big of a deal out of it. Okay, and then I want it to move over, move over to seven. Then I want it to go to is equal to, and with that, our code should be complete. Okay. It should move over to five, press on it, and then uh, plus, then seven, then is equal to, and good. We should have gotten 12, but I forgot to remove that five from before. So we ended up with 55 plus seven, 62. Good enough. We can see that we have our automation working and all of this happened automatically. Now, even if this calculator was somewhere else on the screen, it would still work because we're not hard coding these coordinates. This is all based off detection. Okay, so that's pretty great. And I think it's a very, very powerful tool. Something I want to mention is that this function can be a little slow. It can take some time because there's a big screen and it needs to you know, search the entire screen for that image. So one thing you can do to optimize it a bit, but it comes at a cost, obviously. Um, region, you can use region and specify the region in which you want to do the search. Okay, so I can, so I can do um, 1000 and 500 or not 500 100 and then specify the width and the height where i want to do this so maybe make this a thousand as well or 920 actually and make this i have a 1080p screen right so 100 minus that 980 okay so what i just did was tell it that don't start from zero zero okay start from the thousandth pixel which i assume is somewhere over here and start from 100 on the Y. And then from that point, go 900 pixels to the right and 980 pixels down. So what I'm doing is now, you know, just scouring half the screen, okay? I'm only scanning half the screen uh, in for these images, for five, instead of doing the entire screen. So this makes it like twice as fast because it doesn't need to cover the entire screen. So yeah. This comes at the obvious cost that if your image is on the other side of the screen, then obviously this is going to return a none type object. Okay, so that's something to keep in mind. But in situations where you know that your image is going to be somewhere, okay, it's going to be at that location, then you can use this. All right, it'll speed up your code. So yeah, that's about it. We've covered quite a bit of content today. I hope you guys found this video interesting. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, make sure to subscribe because we have a lot more content on PyAutoGUI and on other Python libraries as well. I'll leave some relevant links in the description below for you to check out. So yeah, do subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in a later video.